after studying this module you shall be able to know about the significance of extraction of poisons the forensic importance of extraction process and the various methods of extraction the practice of extraction is the first step in the qualitative and quantitative analysis of drugs and poisons from complex biological specimens the large group of substances that are toxicologically relevant like pharmaceuticals herbicides pesticides etc differ prominently in their physicochemical properties they are often potent agents that are present only in very low concentration therefore a selected extraction procedure may not only be able to separate the target substances from interferences in the specimen but also be able to increase their concentration comparative to the co extracted matrix compounds the extraction process is often time consuming and labor demanding but applied to the involvement shows that the effort is indispensable because the subsequent analytical steps are based on and benefit from the sample preparation itself appropriate extraction increases the chance of an effective analysis of drugs and poisons example there is less interference in gas chromatography mass spectrometry that is also known as gcms and there is less ion suppression in liquid chromatography and mass spectrometry that is lcms cleaner extracts also decrease the incidence of downtime of sensitiveness and the cost intensive analytical instruments by increasing the service intervals in order to develop a successful extraction procedure some fundamental principles must be considered for extraction of non volatile drugs and poisons from the biological specimens can also be accomplished by adsorption process on the basis of the fundamental principles the extraction methods can then be developed and optimized with respect to the extraction efficiency with a high extraction efficiency for the target compound it should then be possible to create a complete analytical procedure with sufficient overall recovery a complete procedure includes sample pretreatment extraction fractionation purification evaporation chromatographic separation detection identification and the quantitative determination the current development of more powerful and sensitive analytical instruments can only be fully utilized after the successful isolation of the target compounds from the biological specimens without appropriate sample extraction either these sensitive instruments cannot be used at all or the results are unreliable owing to interferences although many optimized procedures for the extraction of specific target compounds in most cases ranging from urine or blood can be found in the literature non selective reliable and robust procedures for the simultaneous extraction of a wide range of analytes with different physical chemical properties are rare and especially when more complex matrices have to be extracted for now let us study about the forensic significance a challenging example from the field of forensic toxicology would be the objectiveless search for a general unknown poison in a putrefied tissue sample from a homicide case or as the case may be in such cases a non selective extraction procedure covering a wide variety of possible target compounds would be required for however the toxicologist will often be challenged with compounds for which no suitable extraction procedure has been available necessitating the development of a new procedure based on 
available data of the target compound. In a most awful circumstance, neither the physicochemical properties of the target compounds nor the composition of the specimen is known because of the large number of toxicologically relevant compounds and the different questions that need to be responded in the various fields of analytical toxicology, a universal standard extraction procedure does not exist. Choosing the best extraction procedure for a particular case and when necessary developing a new extraction method or technique that correctly addresses specific case challenges are very essential skills of the analytical toxicologist. The isolation of the compounds of concern from the biological matrix or the biological specimen is essential for their successful detection, identification and quantification as well. The strategy applied and the effort invested in the development of an extraction procedure depend not only on the physicochemical properties and the expected concentration of the target compounds but also on the nature of the specimen and the available equipment in the analytical laboratory. Sometimes the physicochemical properties of the target compounds allow for their direct detection after digestion of the sample matrix, example metals or for an easy separation from the less volatile matrix compounds. However, there is an important group of less volatile drugs and poisons that demand more complex extraction procedure such as liquid liquid extraction or LLE or the solid phase extraction that is SPE so as to ensure their isolation from the biological matrix. In most cases the appropriate preparation of the specimen is a fundamental precondition for successful sample extraction. Protein free samples such as urine or liquid samples with low protein content such as serum or plasma that are frequently used in clinical toxicology are comparable to a purely aqueous phase and therefore the direct extraction can be tried also. Now let us study some of the extraction processes under which we have first the distillation process. The method involves heating a sample of liquid to convert it into vapor which is then allowed to flow in another location where it is cooled condensing it back to a liquid form. Various modifications of the basic distillation process are used for a specific purpose that is steam distillation, fractional distillation, distillation under reduced pressure, sweep, co-distillation etc. Let us now study about steam distillation. Steam volatile substances can be separated or isolated from blood, urine and properly minced viscera by steam distillation. Steam is passed into the sample and the aqueous distillate is collected by the process of condensation. Toxicants from acidic distillation process include ethanol, methanol, phenol, halogenated hydrocarbons, cyanides etc. On the other hand, the toxicants from basic distillation process include the basic drugs such as amphetamine, methadone and also aniline, pyridine, nicotine etc. Next process of distillation is the fractional distillation. This is a type of distillation which enables the separation of a mixture of volatile liquid differing marginally in boiling point. A mixture of kerosene oil or mineral turpentile oil in an oil water emulsion may be separated by this method. Then we will study about sweep co-distillation. This is another type of distillation technique or method which provides separation of thermally labile volatile compounds at a low temperature without decomposition. Then we have vacuum distillation. The vacuum distillation is a special type of distillation based on the preferential volatilization of organic compounds, especially the pesticides from oils, lipids or 
plant extract using a stream of inert gas and subsequent isolation of volatiles on coal traps or solid adsorbent. It is a purge and trap technique involving dispersion of the sample in thin films on deactivated glass beads or the fluorocell column or alumina or silica gel or the tenex as trapping media at the elevated temperatures. Then we have the second process known as solvent extraction. A system of two immiscible liquids means those liquids which cannot be mixed together is required for the separation of material by solvent extraction. The active constituent should be unevenly soluble in the system thereby enabling extraction of the constituent from one phase to the other. The efficiency of extraction is determined by the distribution coefficient also denoted by capital D wherein capital D is equal to the total weight in grams of solute in the organic phase divided by the total weight in grams of solute in the aqueous phase. If one of the two liquids contain a solute, this method is found to be most appropriate. The system in this case is first shaken and then allowed to settle down. Some of the solute is transferred to the other liquid. Each of the liquid in a mixture of two immiscible liquids of this kind is mentioned as a phase. Thus, some of the solutes is transferred from one phase to the another phase. The amount transferred depends on the relative affinity of the solute for each of the two solvents that is the relative solubility. The immiscible system may involve two organic solvents also. The extraction of this system may be impaired due to the formation of immersion. Solvent extraction is a common technique in forensic toxicology related to the biological matrices. Solvent extraction method has now been upgraded and made automated that is the accelerated solvent extraction technique or better known as ASE. In case of solid non-biological matrices, continuous extraction by a sock slit may be employed that is continuous extraction. Third process is the digestion method. Biological materials that are non-homogeneous, protein rich or degraded such as the tissue samples and post-mortem samples need homogenization that is with a blender to disrupt the cellular structure and sometimes further sample preparation such as deproteinization before extraction from the aqueous phase is possible. In this first we have the dry ash technique or also known as dry ashing. Sometimes active constituents or toxicant are separated on treatment with acid or alkali or digestion on a water bath or muffle furnace that is the biological mattresses are digested on a water bath for about one hour or above or digested in muffle furnace with acid or alkali or chemicals so as to isolate the inorganic metals. Volatile inorganic poisons such as phosphine, arsine and hydrogen sulphide are isolated from their salts on treatment with dilute acids. In this process about 10 to 50 gram of the tissue or other biological material is taken in a silica crucible and heated in a Bunsen burner or Bunsen frame for removing the moisture and partially destroying the organic material. Then the crucible is kept in a muffle furnace. The temperature of the furnace is raised up to 550 degrees centigrade and at this temperature the incineration of the organic matter is performed by keeping the silica crucible for about an hour. After incineration is complete, the crucible is then taken out. The color of the residue is to be noted as when hot because in presence of zinc, 
the residue assumes yellow color while in presence of copper the color of the residue is somewhat bluish green the residue in the silica basin is boiled with 10 milliliter of four normal hydrochloric acid and then filtered off the clear acidic solution is tested for metallic poisons such as copper bismuth zinc and barium etc by performing general group analysis using semi micro methods chromatographic technique and the instrumental techniques second is the wet digestion technique in this process about 50 grams of biological material or 10 milliliter of blood is taken into a large gelled half flask and 20 to 40 milliliter of concentrated nitric acid is added so as to cover the material and flask is then gently heated in a small flame where the mass begins to liquefy. The heating is continued until the liquefaction of the material is complete and that must be done in the presence of copious brown fumes of nitrogen dioxide in the flask. At this stage about 20 to 30 milliliter of concentrated sulfuric acid is added and the flask is heated strongly over a wire gauge and concentrated nitric acid is added in drops by using dropping funnel to the contents of the flask at the rate of about 10 drops per minute so that the atmosphere of the flask must at no time be free from the brown fumes. Heating is continued until all the organic matter is destroyed and the liquid becomes clear and colorless or straw colored. To find out if the oxidation is complete, the flask is then heated without adding off any nitric acid. If there is any unburnt organic matter, the liquid begins to darken and if the digestion is complete, no darkening takes place and the white fumes of sulfur trioxide are given off. In the former case, the addition of nitric acid and heating are continued further till the organic matter is completely oxidized. Heating is continued for 15 minutes so as more to expel the nitric acid completely. Then after cooling, 25 ml of saturated ammonium oxalate solution is added. The liquid is boiled until sulfur trioxide fumes appear. This ensures complete removal of nitric acid. It is then cooled, diluted with an equal volume of water and carefully transferred to a beaker. The beaker is heated on a hot plate or sand bath so as to expel the excess sulfuric acid. The solution is cooled and diluted with water in such a way that the strength of acid is about 10%. At this stage, a precipitate may be formed which contains the insoluble salts of lead, bismuth, tin, barium, strontium or silver etc. The precipitate is then filtered off and tested for metals that has been already told to you. The filtrate will now contain all the other metals except mercury. It is then subjected to systemic group analysis and quantitative determination thereafter as unrequired. Next technique we will study is the microwave digestion. Mattresses are digested with acids or alkalis in microwave oven to facilitate the isolation of inorganic poison in organic mattresses under a specific analytical condition of operation that is the operation of oven at a specific microwave for some time. The interaction of microwave with mattresses results in production of heat with rise of temperature for which the digestion occurs. Next method is the sublimation process. This is very similar to distillation except that the sample is a solid to begin with and is converted directly into the vapor phase and then back into the solid. 
Sublimation is applicable to isolate toxicant in solid mattresses that is naphthalene, anthracene which sublimes. Next technique we will study is the micro diffusion. Micro diffusion is a convenient and popular method that facilitates toxicants, gaseous and volatiles in blood, urine and gastric aspirates to be isolated, detected and determined. This is done by Conway micro diffusion dish. Next is dialysis. It involves separation of a crystalloid from a colloid by filtering through a semi permeable membrane. This separation method may be employed for the separation of toxic cations and anions in a colloidal solution or the dispersion or colloidal matrices especially the biological materials or the biological matrices. The separation process may be accelerated by applying electromagnetic field that is EMF or the electrodialysis also. Now students let us summarize this module. The process of extraction is the preliminary phase in the quantitative and qualitative examination of drugs and poisons from complex biological samples. There are various classical and modern methods of extraction. The selection of proper method of extraction depends on various controlling factors that is the nature of poison, matrix or matrices and also quantity of samples available or forwarded for analysis. The isolation of the compounds of interest from the biological matrix is essential for their successful detection, identification and quantification. The active constituent should be extracted from sample in minimum steps so as to avoid loss during the processing. The extracted material also requires proper stripping or purification so as to avoid interferences of matrices as far as possible. The efficiency of extraction and stripping determines the lower limit of detection, precision and accuracy in the determination. The methods include various methods in chromatography as well as the special extraction methodologies of the present generation that is the iron pair formation, solid phase extraction, solid phase micro extraction and micellar extraction. Solid phase micro extraction or SPME is an extraction technique for the organic compounds in aqueous samples in which the analytes are adsorbed directly from the sample onto a fused silica fiber that is coated with an appropriate stationary phase.